All right, awesome. So let's. Uh, this is still the first half. We'll go into the second half in a second. Don will be joining us in a minute. He was just messing around with his computer, getting ready. Um, so you know, just to recap, we actually talked about this in a previous film session. All right, Maddie. I think Maddie Perfetto here was on an invert and kind of uh, you know dodges to his left hand, even though he doesn't beat his guy here. Notice how the defense is so sucked in because of this crease action. All right, we talked about this off-ball player when we run our invert set, which is called Ivy. All right, so guys that are a little bit new to it, in our Ivy set, we have a guy dodging. That's Matt, obviously. You have a guy that's mirroring his responsibility is uh, backing up the shot. All right, we have two guys inside. We have one here, one here. All right, those guys are typically working together, all right, to try to occupy defensemen, get the defense sucked down, get each other open, et cetera, score easy goals. And then we have our two high guys. So we have Charlie Whitman in this case up here. The other guy is somewhere over here, like right step inside the restraining box. Um, either way, like uh, you might hear me say this a couple times on this film session offensively. Don't always read the Dodger and the ball. Read your man. All right. So if you notice as this top guy that your man is so sucked in, step into this space right here. So that way when you catch it, you're in a position to do a quick short dodge for a shot, right? Hitch and shot, split dodge shot, split roll shot, or just a catch and a shot. Um, so, you know, th that's really just that simple there. So, so right now when he catches this ball here, Charlie, he's not really a threat. So he just kind of moves it, which I'm cool with, but, um, this is also important. We, we just want to recap here, right? When you guys kind of work this, you know, alley dodge and then the roll back to the middle of some guy like decides to take a ridiculous check like this guy, make sure that when you take your angle of pursuit back to the middle, it's not towards the restraining line, right? You don't want to make your move here, right? You want to make your move towards the middle here. Um, you want to do that for a few reasons. One, you want to you want to step into this. You want to get into this sweet spot of the defense so you can get your shot off. Or by getting to that sweet spot, you might suck over this adjacent defenseman. Charlie, if he pushes, all right, you can have you can get a little two man game up top and get a good shot off just by playing a little playing on a string, right? So these two guys are on a string; they work together, all right. So notice Gavin doesn't take a great you know angle on that rollback, and they don't get any offense out of it. So. That's what we're trying to demonstrate here. We'll let this pl possession play out. Um, all right, so this is awesome. I love, guys, my middies, if you wing dodge, if you draw the X adjacent defenseman, throwing the ball through X is such a good option because it allows you to quickly bang the ball from one side of the field to the other, all right? And it's very hard to recover to that. Like, that defenseman now has to probably get inside and maybe have one of his crease defensemen bump off, or he has to, like, run in front of the goalie which is always great as an offense because it's a natural screen or he's got to run and hop over the cage the only problem here guys this lefty attackman is hanging out in space so as this guy starts to wing dodge you should be moving before he throws it to you um and the reason that you should be moving before he throws it is because now your defenseman can go from helping the ball to recovering right back to you and you don't get any offense out of it so notice how um we kind of just forced the ball in that back pipe but that defenseman was able to play too there so. Homie's mic is on. Yeah, I'll mute that for you. The coach went. Who's Mike? This is kind of right where we ended the last time, right? Yeah. I'll mute this. Okay, cool. Um, sorry, guys. Yeah, donor. I just wanted to skip ahead and show. Uh, one more thing in this half here, which was like this little push pull, which you showed last time. I love this. Is this it? Nah, I went too far back. That's where you just went over. Yeah, sorry, it's a little further ahead. It's right here. Yeah, this is great. All right, so, all right, we're running a little wing motion here. All right, Gavin's dodging from this high corner. Good spacing. Um, this guy, backside midi for you, for the guys that are new to the offense, backside midi in the wing motion. All right, we start with like a three-man top. He's crashing to the crease. This guy's reading the dodge, so he's going to fill. This top center guy should read the dodge as well, um, but not only read the dodge like we talked about, you want to read this dude, which is your man. All right, so this is a great example of a push-pull, right? So a push-pull is basically 
Um, if, if, if your teammate who's adjacent to you dodges at you or at your defenseman, you push to space because when you catch it, you have a shot. A pull is if, like, you're starting, let's say, more to the middle, you dodge down the alley and you're the trail guy, you're kind of pulling with him. All right, so this is a great example of a push. All right, notice the angle that Ronan takes. Ronan, you know, he, after watching film, you notice he's actually a very good off-ball player because he moves very fast and, um, you know, he doesn't stand still a lot. So this is just a simple bang. You know, probably should have cashed in on that, but at the end of the day, that's a, that's a good look that will take all day. Go back to the beginning of the dodge. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll just give me a couple seconds here. There's all right, this, here we go. This becomes even more of a threat if Jacobson here, he, he has a nice split, but then he doesn't push towards the goal. He actually mm -hmm. runs straight at the defender, and that's what that gets the defender to kind of lock eyes with him and lose him. But if he makes this uh, right-to-left split here and he starts pushing towards the goal more, if he starts coming down into that anchor, he, that guy is going to have to collapse on him or Gavin's going to walk right down Main Street and we're going to get an easy goal also. So it's really important that, that the Dodger, you push that middle of the field, and really that Dodger, you need to be watching that guy as well, just like Gavin does there and we get a good time. Yeah, exactly. Dodge to score, right? You want to dodge to draw. You don't want to dodge to feed. I mean – it's funny, like, here's an example, I believe, where we kind of are dodging to feed because we're running an out-of-bounds play, um, which we'll talk about. But, like, you still want to attack as if, you know, if your guy trips or if you get a step on your guy, like, you're still trying to put pressure on the defense, right? So good communication between these two guys, right? It looks like we're going to run this, like, little fish hook action, right? So for our attackmen, right, you're kind of lulling your defenseman to sleep. And then as soon as you get to about five, six yards, you're kind of flashing back to the ball in that kind of fish hook motion. All right, that's a fish hook. That's my fish. All right, um, this guy right here, though. Right, I'm not. I don't love. I don't love how he's. Look at that. Like, he's he's rolling back to his left hand to feed before this guy even gets above goal line. Like, you got to drive to your right hand and put pressure and act like you're actually going to your right hand before you roll back to your left. He should have made that move like here. And and here is actually it's on the opposite side of the cage. It's not at X. All right. So what happens? You know, Callahan gets dr driven out, and look, he's thrown off his back foot like 30 yards from the guy that he's feeding it to. I mean, even if the crease guy catches that, I mean, there's no way he's going to be in a position to get that shot off. But as a result, it should have been a turnover, but it was a nice ground ball by that guy. So, two attack guys have a bit of an opportunity to work together. So, like, one of the things that we do with Farmingdale a lot of times to, to like sell the fish hook, right, is you know you're going to run a hook with a, with a guy that you're running with all the time. Have that guy kind of come and set like a lazy pick almost towards you. And then just tell him to get out of here. Like wave him off. Like tell him to like go. And this way his defender thinks like you don't want the pick. Then you got to really dodge like what Corey's saying hard. And then when you're able to roll back, it's A, going to help sell the fish hook. And B, like right there, you're staring at the crease. That defenseman is just going to tee off on your arms. Mm -hmm. So the reason I circled this dude and this dude the ball's at back right now, and this is something I'm going to point out several times in this film. The off-ball urgency on offense is so weak, guys. It has to be better. All right, you guys are now, you know, our 20. These are 22s. Like you guys are going to be juniors, crazy. Next time you play high school ball, like you have to move with pace. Like this is not going to cut it. A jog or a walk is never going to allow you to get to your spot quick enough offensively and get action and get against a good uh, against good team defense. All right, so you got to move quickly. And it all starts with knowing where you're going. Like, if you know where you're going, there's no excuse not to sprint to your spot, like, all the time. Here's another example, right? <laughs> all, three, all three guys are literally not even looking at the ball, just jogging to their spot. Like, this should be an absolute sprint, like, as fast as possible. All right, and what happens here, I mean, look what happens. It's only natural. He dodges to his left hand and beats his guy. And – he, you know what? He does a great job here, Gavin, drawing um, a slide from this near near pipe crease guy. And he actually makes the right look. But the problem is because this crease guy got here so late from walking, he's not in a position to create separation from their help inside and catch the ball with his hands free. So as a result, even though Gavin makes the right look, even though he shouldn't have thrown it, it's a turnover. All right. And also we got, I think, Maddie on the back pipe here. Matt, I mean, this is the same for you. Like, you know, like you got to sprint to X here. So if Gavin does decide to do that little punch to sideline roll away, you're there. But like right now, Gavin doesn't really have any options other than to like 
you know, really just pull the ball and get nothing. So we got to be quicker on the escape when we, uh, when we mirror and we got to be better inside. I mean, not to mention these guys don't do anything together. Like you got to maybe set uh, seals and slips for each other, crisscross. I mean, you start on the wrong side, the righty should start on this side, lefty should really start on that side. So in my opinion, off ball, there's a lot wrong with this picture, which um, again, it can be fixed. It's just, it's a little urgency. That's it. So now we turn the ball over. I mean, yeah, Gav shouldn't have thrown it, but at the end of the day, it's the right place to be looking, All right. I'm going to skip ahead here because we're there. You guys are on defense for a long time. So we'll go. I think this is a lightning uh, donner. So I just wanted to talk about this, if that's cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So you got, I mean, again, this poll's kind of like, I don't know if he's just like jogging. Or that's how he runs, but he's, he's subbing off the field. All right. So to, just to recap guys with our lightning talk spacing, we want to get the ball in the high corner. Um, Don, do you have preference? Between like box side or off yeah um, yeah far so side. generally like it, it depends on where first of all you got to recognize personnel that's the biggest thing when we talk about thunder and lightning all right so right now it looks like we do not have a face-off guy on because we just played defense it's just going to be the pole so we want to get the ball to one of the guys who has the short stick it's going to be a short stick trying to get off with that pole right so we want to more than likely a guy is going to want to catch that ball going down the right-handed alley so we want to hold that ball kind of by the box on this particular side because we want to be able to deliver that pass that righty so he can go right down the alley with a stick to the outside. All right. We don't want to have to have that guy catch it lefty. So we'll, right, so we'll it also yeah, sorry. Bruce here. Yep. So Will Willie can get inside here like Don was talking about. So that way when when we catch the ball from the midline, we could dodge down this right alley. Okay. Um, also, so like we we sub the pole off guys directly through the the midline so that's your shortest distance right to get the next guy on and you know this kid actually kind of makes a heads up play he he realizes you know this kid is in a bad spot and subs over the midline for him and I actually really love what Sarge did he had to heads up Sarge's guy subs off the field and he takes advantage of it so he immediately attacks the alley this guy's way too high that's the first problem I, I like that attack been done do you do you disagree he should be like here right well, I don't know that that's an attackman. I think that if it was, then the ball shouldn't have been with him to start the lightning anyway. It no, might... the, this dude here is an attackman. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, he shouldn't have been starting this anyway. We shouldn't have been running off the field with an attack guy. Really, the attack guy should be pinched on the, on the pipes. Yeah, nice so and tight in here. Is, yeah. Yeah, so Sarge does a good job drawing that guy. And, I mean, you can't shoot right to the goalie. But that's, that's, a, good, that's a good look out of the substitution game. We want that back, though. Like, we, this is one yeah. right here, too. Like, Matty Perfetto, we anticipate that, right? This is that typical, like I talk about, when we're playing extra man, just pause it. Yep. When we play extra man offense, man, and you get a defense rotating, if the same person plays you that just played the ball, the ball needs to go back the way it just came. But if a new person plays you, the ball needs to continue to move in the direction that it was moving. So, Matty, right. if you yep. do a good job and you curl to the bottom pipe here, we should be dumping this right down to Matt, down to the back pipe for, for a, a one that we can pretty much roll into the back side of the goal if we're doing so, this correct. So as an example, all right, this, this ready attackman, let's call yeah, him Bob, yeah. right? This guy slides, so Sarge moves the ball to Bob. That's great. All right, Matt's guy, all right, Perfetto's guy slides up to Bob. All right, that's Matty's time to, to show here on this pipe, and that's, that's called a frogger. You catch this thing on the pipe and just turn and shoot. All right, that should be a one more and a goal. All right, I know you didn't throw it, but he's getting there. Matt's definitely getting there. But and then, of course, look at how – Yeah. It's just – it's about being there early. It's about anticipating. Yeah. That guy comes two or three steps off. And, I mean, it's obvious that that Perfetto's man is going to have to be the guy to stop ball. So, yeah. Actually, it's anticipate. So, I just want to talk about the riding game for a second. Um, good hustle – good job by both guys here. Callahan does a good job driving him, forcing him towards the middle of the field where you typically have help. All right. Matt's trailing, but you guys, you need to work together here because what happens is Matty Perfetto trails to his bottom hand, this defenseman's bottom hand, just because he doesn't take a great angle. He's kind of like right on this guy's heels. Work together. If Callahan's forcing him to the middle, Matty should take a better angle and try to trail, you know, just, just a trail check right to his stick. But instead, I think you guys kind of like run into each other here just because you're not really working together. But that's just, that's just an example of kind of like squeezing a guy and, uh, 
and trying to get that ball on the ground, but that, I like the hustle. Um, all right, I'm going to skip forward here again. So That's a long we talk. In there. Yeah, crazy. I mean, you guys definitely had the ball. You just turned it over. All right, so this is automatic here. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go back a couple seconds. Um, all right, so automatic. We start in a 3-3. So you got a lefty here, top center. All right, we have our righty kind of like slip finisher guy. You got a righty dragging over the top. All right, play starts when we bang that ball to the side. All right, you throw across, shallow cut. We just pause that for a second because Matt does this a lot, and I want to talk about this while we have this second to talk about it. Sure. Guys, there's no rush. Like, Matt, you do this a lot. You start carrying the ball to the middle before you go to throw the ball. Just stay where you are. It's supposed to be a little bit of a shallow cut under. So don't, like, get lazy and just kind of like, all right, well, I know I'm going to go there anyway, so I'm going to kind of give that an action away. Like, throw the ball across the top by moving your feet, wait for that guy to carry, and then come and get under. See what I'm saying? He's already moving towards that ball all the time. It's rushed. Also, hold on one second. Draw. I got to go back here. That's the problem. We don't draw anybody on that one. Yeah. So, so like – It's too high. All right. So, he – so, what's happening here, guys, is – all right, this lefty attackman, because he's so high, this dude can play here, and he could also, if he wanted to, play here, which he's kind of doing. All right? And that – again, that starts with Matt with that shallow cut. But, again, the lefty doesn't do a great job. He's got to be lower. Because the goal, I mean, they still rotate, it looks like, which yeah, they shouldn't. But it should be open. Yeah, like this lefty, his job is to get this defenseman sucked out nice and wide. So that way this guy down here is low. Also, Will, you should be like three yards below goal line, and you should be like tighter, like lower and tighter. Like you're starting so high, right? This guy is going to be all over your hands simply because of where you are off ball, where you're positioned. Like your off ball play should, can be a lot more precise here. All right, so – oh, there you go. Draw and move the ball. We don't even draw with, with Sarge. Sarge is the guy who has to get commitment from the top right guy. Like, everybody has to understand playing extra man offense is just about getting commitment. Sarge has to get commitment from that top lefty defender there. And then we really have him spinning. We get him spinning even without getting commitment. Sarge needs, Sarge needs that kid to commit, right? Yeah, exactly. Nice and high. And Callahan needs to not be so high. All right, draw and move the ball, dude. All right, now, this considering the situation and how poorly they play this man down, this is the right look. Like, Jason Kozak, you should also be higher, dude, because if they played this correctly, you'd have a guy all over your hands. But that's definitely the look. And I would just take an extra second and just, you know, get a better shot off. But that's, that's, that's a nice – some nice action. All right, we'll, we'll, I'll talk about the riding game. What would you say, Donner? Go yeah, back you got it. Sure. Because, again, this goes back to – so I want to talk about Feldman, number one, because Feldman is the feeder on this, and he talks – he does this a lot. So you talked about being a little bit deeper. He needs to be catching that ball a little bit behind goal line and catching it and then driving to the corner. Because if he did, Ager should actually be another step or two to his left, really on that back pipe. Okay? And he, should make, he probably could have gotten that ball initially. But watch Matt come open also. Oh, he's wide open, Matt. So, I mean, um, just hold that ball for a second. You see everybody collapses down to Jack Eggers. I just feel like we've kind of become a little bit in love with the skip over the top, which is yeah. really our last look rather than getting it to the back pipe or to that cutter inside. Yeah, I agree 100%. Just considering the situation – like, normally you want to hit Maddie, but considering how condensed everything is, Jay yeah. ended up being well, wide open. Pretty open. Oh, yeah, he was. Because the guy who was supposed to take the crease ends up collapsing the Kozak, too. I mean, listen, it's all – it's easy to sit here and watch a film and go over that, too. But I just want to talk like, – I, I don't predetermine where you're going to go, right? We talk about being that guy. If it's a four-man, more than likely you're looking to the back pipe. It's a five-man yep. looking at the crease. But if you take a look at that crease guy and he's not picking up that cutter, just wait a second. Have that patience. So I'm going to talk riding, guys, angles. Like, it, you're going to get – guys, you're going to get to the point where you're playing with um, a shot clock. Your goal as an attackman is not to take the ball away, right? You're not you're not trying to like strip a guy and de-stick him and, and look good on your highlight tape. You're trying to delay the clear. You're trying to get guys to redirect the ball as much as possible. You want the poles to handle the ball and throw passes, overs, redirects, right? The last thing you want to do is get beat initially. If this is the rabbit guy, let's say, the last thing you want to do is get beat. All right. And really this is about angles here. 
So Agris just takes a bad angle and this guy just slips up the sideline. Okay. And this guy is literally walking. His job is to get to the midfield line. And right now there's no shot. He's going to get there just simply because again, this is off ball movement. Same thing when you're on the offensive end guys, when you're riding and you're off ball, meaning you're not defending the ball, you should be sprinting at all times. You only have to play defense attack until the midfield line. Like that's, that's a joke. If you can't sprint, until the midfield line at this point, I can assure you Coach Dunn and I will just remove you from the field this summer if we get a chance to get out there and play. All right, so you get the ball back. I mean, the guy just pisses the ball away, but got lucky there because that was a poor ride. All right, not a bad shot. I mean, shoot the score. I like that because at least you get the ball back here. But, again, OBs, man, this team in OBs. Here's a guy, the ball goes out of bounds. And then we're not even thinking about running anything. Maybe we're still maybe we're still man up. I'm hoping we are. Yeah, believe it or not, the longest man up possession ever. Somehow, like you guys are still man up, but simple rules, guys, man up. You, you got to get you got to get someone committed to you. Coach Dunn said it earlier. Like you shouldn't just move the ball to move the ball. Like you got a little two on one action right now. Like step up here and throw that ball to the adjacent. Let him step into a seam and maybe get a shot off or or move it again. But I think we're running like a modified version of Towson here is what it looks like. But then we just piss the ball away ourselves on lazy feet. Yeah, exactly. And, again, that's why you just throw to the guy that's standing right next to you. you got to keep it simple. Let me skip ahead here a little bit. Yeah, get the ball back. This might be Towson done because you're still man up. I think they must have gotten like a two-minute non-releasable or something. Gotcha. All right, let's – it's, again, same thing, right? I'm going to go back because – Run an auto again. This is still poor spacing. Yeah. All right. So, right, no commitment. Sarge is 10 yards off this guy. He can play two, right? You don't want this top guy to be able to play two. And when I say play two, I'm, I'm referring to playing one and playing two, this lefty guy, All right? Matt's got – Matt should be, you know, here at this point. I mean, it's, you two need to clean this up, but that's besides the point. Yeah. And because that guy's so high, right, he, he he just catches and chucks the ball. I mean, he's not even looking. He doesn't get any commitment. Are this guy's still, still – yeah, they're, they're still rotating, like very poorly coached man down D here. And it looks like we're not even set, like, because Jason Kozak is supposed to be the guy popping off the crease. He's not even there. And Matt's still going to be wide open inside. That's the look. So, Matt, um, great cut. Will, great, great look. I mean, he, very simple. You should fake to the far pipe and shoot to the near pipe, and you'll score every time on this. Um, but instead, you kind of just catch and shoot, and you just make it easy on the goalie. Like, I think anytime you guys catch the ball inside this, I call it the nucleus, right, positively charged. You got your protons in here. These are, just get some good looks in here, positive looks. You got to move the goalie a little bit. Um, so I think that's the only thing I would correct there in the goalie. And I don't even know if you saw it, but he ends up getting a piece of it and saves it. All right, so it looks like – all right, I'm going to skip ahead, Don, because you guys play a ton of D after that man up possession. Those are a little – I don't know. What was the final score of this game, Don? We won like 6-2 or 7-2, I think. So yeah. I don't know where we scored all our goals. Yeah, you guys – I mean, you guys could have scored probably 12 or 13 goals in this game. You got some good looks. Guys, you really made this goalie look like an All-American. I mean – Yeah. And we did that in the first game against them, too. Yeah, you got oh, some good looks. You got pretty good in the first one. And that was uh, – I, I can't. Yeah, I want to say it was like 7-3 or something like that. We beat them, beat them by a significant margin. Wow, we got 10 minutes already? Shit. All right, what else we got here? Come on. All right, we're – we man up again? What's going on? Yeah, let me go back. I think we're just playing extra man offense. Yeah, just playing. All right, I'll let this play right now. Yeah, um, oh, they're gonna start chasing. They're chasing Matt. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a great. This is a great skip pass. Um, this kid. This kid should be even with the ball because he's not, and he's a short stick. He can't get in that passing lane. So Matt skips the ball through to Charlie. And, I mean, even though it was 14 miles an hour, oh, my God, a bounce shot. Look what happens. Goalie's on the floor, ball's in the back of the net. You guys, that's the first time I saw a bounce shot. I watched the film this morning. It was like 30 minutes. And then you guys bounce it and you score. And it wasn't even like a – you know, didn't blow it by him or anything. So, 
you guys get, don't don't underestimate the power of a bounce shot. Probably never been coached to bounce the ball. Probably not. All right, so we're gonna do another possession or two, and I want to want to look at the college guys a little bit. All right, so. This dude off ball, I mean, he's got to be in a better position to, like, push. Because, remember, we talk push-pull. I mean, if Gavin dodges to his left hand, this guy should be pulling to the middle. If Gavin gets to his right hand, this dude should be pushing down the alley. But he's, like, walking off ball with a stick at his hip. He's got to get to a better spot. So that way, if Gavin decides to draw this adjacent guy and does a nice job, he can actually get somewhere. But instead, you know, kind of just jogging. Again, should be here and should push here as Gavin gets to his right hand. All right, instead, he's too far in space. Now, if you get to this position, guys, midfielders, let's say, like, something happened, you're being lazy, whatever, and you're above the ball, we worked on this. I know you did it with Dunn in box lacrosse. Like, that's a great time for a flip. Like, look where your defenseman's standing. I guess he's looking to help the ball or he's staring at the ball. That's my guess. You should run full speed along the top of the restraining line so Gavin has the option to flip it to you. At least be a threat if you're going to, like, put yourself in a shitty position because you're walking off ball. But instead, still, he's walking. You get nothing out of it. Gavin flips it to him. I mean, almost loses the ball. And now you get no, you know, offense. Like, we're not putting any pressure on the defense right now. I know, I know it's late in the game. But you still want to always try to play with pace a little bit and put a little more stress on this defense. All right, so. Yee. Okay, so, like, can we rewind that back? Because we do this a lot. Yeah, definitely. So, so number one, I think the biggest theme on all these offensive positions that we've talked about early on in the last game and this game is, like, when you're off ball, you just can't relax. You just can't, mm -hmm. like, go to sleep. But here we get kind of an ad, uh, dodge down the alley. we got to be more definitive with our dodge here because now this guy's going to sweep back. But initially he went out. So now we're, like, all kind of, like, which way do we go? Which is why I tell the middle guy, don't really follow. Just kind of stay wide. And as a matter of fact, we did something at Farmingdale I thought was interesting. I'll talk to Corey about it. We go into the summer about having the crease guy mirror the dodge either way he goes. Okay. But go back just a little bit more, Cor. Sure. Right here. Good. Let it go. One so sec. you want to get back to your left hand. That's great. But it's got to be off the split initially. Yeah, that was pretty good. I thought you. I just wanted. To, I just wanted to point out, Don. This is the direction you should take, guys. Dodging. Mm -hmm. This is the direction he took. He's speeding right. off his back foot, makes no contact. Also, I circled this guy. He's about to throw a massive slap check. Absorb that check and then, and then re-attack the goal. I think that's Lennon there. Lennon yeah. should absorb this and then attack downhill. Like, you guys got to use, um, you know, the contact, like, that you absorb from defensemen to, to your advantage a little bit, right? You can't run from it. You got to attack it. And, and Gavin kind of faded a little bit more too. And we're just yeah, Gav, of Gav should be here. Yeah, that yeah. would. And then you end up scoring on that. I almost scored on that. Okay. No, but I mean, listen, don't feed that cutter. cutter yeah. He's, he's really just looking. taking space. Unless he's somehow magnificently wide open, don't throw that ball. I'm going to skip ahead to one more and then we'll do college the last five minutes. Yeah. All right. So I think this is Towson done just based on personnel. All right, so on Tows, yeah, it looks like Jason's about to fade off yeah. the crease, right? But, again, this is that laziness that I was talking about. Go back even to just our spacing. So, like, this, yeah. this is starting to drive me insane because it's one of our better players just being lazy. So, Matt, you're supposed to be at, like, the corner of the box and a little bit lower, right? Let Sarge throw the ball to you. We can throw the ball 20 yards, 20, 25 yards across because now – when you start to carry, it should look a little bit like automatic, right? We should be trying to make them think we're running the same play. So you're, you're already carrying so high and away from this defender that you're not drawing anybody. So now you almost have to step into them. This is a good example, guys. When you cut, you got to draw attention and you got to cut with a purpose. Obviously, if you're open, you want to catch and finish the ball, but – uh, Callahan, I think that is, does a nice job uh, getting attention and, and sucking the defense to the this side of the field. Jason, Great Cole, job by, you got to be in the picture here, boss. Yeah, exactly. So, Jason, you got to be a little more in the picture, show up. 
Um, great job. Look, he sucked the whole defense over to this uh, right pipe. Um, and that allowed – here's Sarge about to set a seal. Sarge, if you're watching this, you got to slip after you seal, though, because your defenseman gets by you and you just kind of stand there. Right? At this point, once your defenseman is past you, you got to slip to the ball. That's a good – this is a good look, though. I think we end up scoring here. Yep, that's good. That's good. That's good stuff on – I mean, besides your spacing initially, I thought that was a well-run yeah. kind of play. One yeah. other thing I would say, though, is, like, as we get through the summer and you have teams like this, they like say we played these guys twice, right? Going mm -hmm. back to Corey's point about slipping is that when you have hit Matt for that first one and we score on it, hold that ball for a second, Feldman, almost let that guy get through and then slip that pick and we may get a nice little dunk off the slip. Sorry, let me turn the sound off. All right, I'm going to go back here a little bit. We have three minutes. Should I send another link done so we can buy ourselves another, like, 15 minutes here? I got to hop off at five. I told a student that I would uh, help them out. But, yeah, actually, yeah, because I got 15 minutes then anyway. Sure. Yeah. So, hey, fellas, we, we have three minutes left. What I'm going to do is once we run out of time, I'm going to send another link on SportsU to buy us another 15 minutes so we can watch more of this college film. Um, done. Why don't we do this? What, you want to take some questions or maybe see what anyone learned in that first film session with, with, with the 22s? So, hey, let's do this. Why don't you guys put your thumb up or raise your hand or something and tell us something that we learned in that first film session or ask a question, either or. Give me something. You guys can show your faces, too, if you want. Like, I can't really see anybody besides Ben, Fergie, Perfetto. Let's start with you, Perfetto, because we mentioned, you, you know, you, this is your team. Give me something that you uh, – that you learned or you have a question about? Um, just like getting everywhere quicker, being moving faster off the ball. Yep. Or playing with pace. A lot of that, Matt, is just anticipating, right? It's not kind of like waiting to see what's going to happen. Like I was showing you on that one play where you could have had to dunk. You reacted in time. Like you, you realized what was going to happen. But if you were kind of already thinking about that, as soon as that guy threw the ball back to that attackman and your guy was the only guy in front of the cage, that light bulb should have already been going off. Like, man, I got to be a goal line so I can get an easy one here. Stuff. Big theme of the day. Let's get one more since we have about 30 seconds left. Giacobbe, give us something. Uh, on the ride, it's not always about getting the home run checks. It's about just taking a better angle and just trying to delay the clear a bit. Help yep. On the midi yeah. stuff. Yeah, man. Especially for our guys that are going to be in college next year. I mean, you're just not going to play if you guys ride with one hand on your stick, throw rap checks, get penalties, trips. You know, it's just not going to happen. You got to, got to buckle down. Um, like even when we ten man ride at Farmingdale, we, we're most even if you look at Yale, if you look at Virginia, a lot of them don't press down necessarily to to try and create pressure. A yep. lot of them are drop 10 mans. They, they're going to let you walk the ball up the field a little bit. And the whole goal of it is just to have that clock ticking as much as they can before you even get to them. And then you want to put the 10 man on where they have to make a decision as that time is starting to expire. All right. I'm going to, I'm sending this link out right now, guys. Check sports. You we're, we're about to get cut out. We got another 20 minutes.